Hello everyone, let's look at this definite integral here. If we are to find the value for this integral, um, we are going to integrate this function usually, right? And then we need to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and then we plug in the upper limit and then we plug in the lower limit into the antiderivative of this function and then we are going to subtract them to get the value. But here, um, if you look at this function right here, we need to use integration by parts to integrate this function. It's because it's a product of x to the fourth times sine of x. And so uh, if we are to do integration by parts, either we use the tabular method or we are going to have to use the traditional method four times to, to find the uh, antiderivative for this function. Okay, so now um, because it's a definite integral and then it just happens that the upper limit and the lower limits are opposite of each other, so we're suspecting that we can probably try to use some of the uh, integral properties and then and see if that will help us figure out the answer more quickly. Okay, so one thing that we need to check here is that we are going to, we are just going to just check something right here. So let's let f of x be this integrand. So it would be x to the fourth and then sine of x. Okay, so we want to check whether this function is even or odd. And then if we, what, how do we check? We actually need to plug in uh, negative x in there and then we can check this. And so if we are to check this and we plug in negative x in here, then we are going to get negative x quantity raised to the fourth and then we have sine of negative x. Okay, so now let's, Let's check here. So um, <clears throat> we know that negative x to the fourth is actually just x to the fourth. Okay, good. the negative sign does not really matter here. Okay, and what about the sign of negative x? S we know that sine is an odd function. So when we do sine of negative x, we can actually rewrite this as Okay, so we, I actually need to put a pair of brackets right here, and then we are actually going to be getting negative, and then sine of x. This is because sine is an odd function. And then <clears throat> if you're getting confused right here, let me just recall something here. So it's important to, to know that um, f is an odd function. If you plug in a negative x into the function, we are actually getting the opposite of the original function. The minus sign on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, this is the original function, right? This this right here, this is the original function. This is the original f. But what are we getting here? We have the opposite, which is a negative sign in front of this function right here. Okay, so uh, because we know the sines and off functions, when we plug in negative x, we can actually rewrite it as negative sine of x. So sine is the original function here, and then there was a minus sign in front of it. Okay, so that's just based on this property right here. Okay, so if we can simplify this function here, then we are going to move the negative sign to the front. So we are going to get negative x to the fourth and then sine of x. And do you actually see that this x to the fourth and then sine of x is also the original function? This is the original f. So if you just look at the function right here, x to the fourth sine of x and then x to the fourth sine of x, that's actually exactly the original function. Let me just cover the whole function there, okay? And then we actually have a minus sign in front of it. So what can we say here? We can actually rewrite that as negative f of x. And do you see that, that we just show that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. And so that means what? That means f is an odd function. Yeah, so that means f is an odd function. And now what do we know about 
this integral here when we have um, like the pi over 3 to pi over 3 and then you have an odd function right here x to the 4 sine of x dx yeah so what we know is that when this is an odd function then what happens what's the answer here um, as long as those two limits are opposite of each other then we are going to get zero here so we did not need to go through the whole process of integration by parts, but we still find the value for this integral here. But it only works when you have a definite integral here. And that function is an odd function. This integrand is an odd function. And also the lower and the upper limits are opposite of each other. Opposite means that they have the same absolute value, but the signs are opposite. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, give me a like, and then please also check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.